Hi, I'm Tamara from MooglyBlog.com, and in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to crochet the Lily Sugar and Cream Crochet Hydrated Hiker Water Bottle Sling. This is a free pattern I designed for yarnspirations.com using Lily Sugar and Cream. And as you can see, it holds a standard size stainless steel water bottle with a little bit of give for all the variation out there. It's also got this long strap that you can wear as a crossbody or throw it over your shoulder. You can totally adjust the length of this strap to fit the individual you're making it for. And if you need it a little bit shorter, switching between individuals, you can just tie a little knot in the top. So let's go ahead and get started making our own hydrated hiker. To make the hydrated hiker, I used two colors of lily sugar and cream, the robin's egg blue and the white. To demo today, I'm going to use robin's egg blue and a darker blue so that it's a little easier to see on camera. You'll also need a US 7 4.5 millimeter crochet hook. This one is by Susan Bates. And of course, you'll need your standard crochet supplies like scissors and a yarn needle to weave in your ends. If we take a look at the hydrated hiker, you can see it's got a little bit of an open bottom here and an interesting stitch pattern as we work our way up. If you don't like it, you can work those as solid rounds of single crochet instead. It's also got that long handle I talked about that you can totally easily adjust the length for your personal size. It's just rows back and forth here of double crochet, so you can add more rows for more length or take a few out to make it shorter for people who are a little bit smaller. Let's go ahead and get started making it. This project is crocheted from the bottom up, so I'm going to start with a darker color since that's the color that will touch the ground and is likely to get the most dirty. So I'll find the end of my yarn here and pull up a few yards and then find the end again. We start with a magic circle. So rather than making a slip knot, we're going to take the end of our yarn, come in six inches or so, and then we're going to go over our forefinger of our non-hook hand twice towards us, just like a yarn over. So hold out that finger and go one, two. Then we're going to take our hook, slip it under both of those loops, and grabbing the one that's there in back, we're going to pull it just under the other one, like so. Yarn over and pull through a chain, and now your magic circle is locked together, and we can go back to our instructions. So now we're going to chain four, which counts as our first double crochet and a chain one. So we yarn over and chain four. One, two, three, and four. This can be a little tricky with that ring still on your finger, but after we make this next stitch, we'll be able to pull the ring off our finger. So next, we begin the repeat that takes us the rest of the way around round one. We double crochet in the ring and then chain one seven times. So let's make that double crochet. We're going to yarn over, go under both of those loops. We wanna go over the ring that goes all the way around and under that tail end there. Pull up our loop and make our double crochet. Take our time working that off there. And now I feel comfortable pulling my finger out because I know that my loop will stay open now that it's had that stitch worked into there. So we need to finish our repeat with a chain one, and that's the first one. Double crochet in the ring and chain one. That was the first of seven. We need to do that six more times. So we double crochet in the ring and chain one. Double crochet in the ring and chain one. And I like to use my other hand to stabilize it so I know it's kind of hard to see, but you can see there I've been working right into the ring and I make sure that I go in the ring and again around that tail as well. Double crochet in the ring and chain one. So we're going to keep doing that until we've done that seven times. So now we have that beginning chain four and then seven double crochets followed by a chain one. You can see our final chain one there after our final double crochet. So now what we want to do is go ahead and take that tail and start to gently pull. You can see how that closes the ring in the middle right up. When we go to weave in our ends, we'll want to make sure to weave this end in in a couple of different directions to make sure that this magic circle doesn't come undone later. To finish up round one, we need a slip stitch in that third chain made. Remember when we chained four, it was a double crochet and a chain one. So we want to slip stitch to the top, or rather to that third chain to call that the top of our first double crochet. So we just wanna get under those two loops of the chain, 
pull our loop through and finish our slip stitch. And this is what your hydrated hiker should look like after round one. And now we're ready to begin round two. We're going to start with a chain of five, and this time it's going to count as a treble crochet plus a chain one. So that means that fourth chain will be the top of our treble, and that fifth chain is our chain one. Then our repeat for this one, we're going to work a treble crochet in that next chain space, the next chain one space right there. We don't want to go into the chain one, just right into the space underneath it and work off that treble crochet and then chain one again. To continue around, we want to treble crochet in the next stitch. So for a treble crochet, we yarn over twice. We'll go right into that next stitch, pull up our loop and work them off in pairs. Oop, let me get that last one pulled through again. There we go, and chain one. Then we treble crochet in the next chain space. Work those loops off in pairs and chain one. Then we do it again. Treble crochet in the next stitch, like so. Work our way up here, chain one, then treble crochet in the next chain space, followed by a chain one. So we're going to continue that all the way around for round two. So as you can see, I've worked a treble crochet in each stitch and in each chain space, always followed by a chain one. So now we're ready to finish round two by joining to the fourth of those five chains. You'll remember I pointed that out as the top of our treble crochet. So we can go ahead and put our slip stitch right in there. And that's what it should look like at the end of round two. To make round three, we're going to be working with a much shorter stitch, single crochets. We start with simply a chain one, and then we're going to work two single crochets in each chain space around. We're going to skip over the stitches themselves. Just go right into that chain space for one single crochet, and then a second one. Then we can just jump right over that stitch and put two single crochets in the next chain space. We'll continue this all the way around. So I will see you at the end of round three. And here we are at the end of round three. I worked two single crochets into each one of those chain spaces, and then I joined to that first single crochet with a slip stitch. You can see because we didn't really increase in this round, it's starting to cup up. In fact, we're done with our increases. We are going to be working even all the way up until we get to that handle. So round four is quite simple. We just chain one and single crochet in each stitch around. So I will see you at the end of round four. So now we've finished round four, just a simple row of single crochet in each stitch and then a join. We're ready for round five and that's where we begin that repeat. Again, if you don't like that look of that fabric, you can just work this as simple rounds of single crochet for the same number of rows. To make the repeat though, we're going to start with a chain one and we're going to single crochet in the first eight stitches. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Then we're going to chain seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Then we skip the next seven stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then we put a single crochet in the very next stitch. And that is our repeat. Single crochet eight, chain seven, skip seven, single crochet in the next. You'll do that one more time and that will take you all the way around for round five. As you can see, I did that repeat one more time. After I single crocheted after our chain, I did eight more single crochets, chain seven, skip seven, and single crochet in that very last stitch. Then we can simply join with a slip stitch to that first single crochet we made to finish up round five. Now we're ready for round six. Round six begins with a chain one, and then our repeat is going to be 
single crochet in the next eight stitches, single crochet in the chain space, chain five, single crochet in the same chain space, and then single crochet in the next stitch. And again, we'll do that twice. So let's do that first one together. We're going to start again. We've got our chain one, single crochet in eight stitches. So we want to start in that first one. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. I need to stop for just a second here and pull up a little bit more yarn for my skein. There we go. So we've single crocheted in the first eight stitches. Now we're going to single crochet into this big chain space. We want to keep this one right here to the side where we've been crocheting. Now we're going to chain five. One, two, three, four, five. Skip the rest of this chain space and we want to crochet in the chain space again, but we want to put this one at the far end of it here. There we go, so that those big chain spaces sort of line up together. Then we go right back to crocheting into our stitches and crochet into that very next stitch. So that is our repeat for round six. Start again with single crochet in the next eight, and then we'll see, work our way all the way around, and I'll see you when we're ready for round seven. So we finished round six with a single crochet in that last chain space and then a single crochet in that last stitch finished with a slip stitch. Now we're ready for round seven. We're going to start with a chain one and we're going to single crochet in the first nine stitches. So we start right in that first one. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and if you look you can see that takes us into that stitch that we worked into that chain space. So now what we're going to do is work our next single crochet in that chain space. Want to make sure we get just this one. And now we are going to chain three. One, two, three. We jump over to the other side of this chain space to make our next single crochet. I'm going to stretch out and stack all those chain spaces. And now we're ready to work into that stitch. So that's one and then another one. So that is our repeat for round seven. Single crochet in nine stitches, single crochet in the chain space, chain three, single crochet in that same chain space, and single crochet in the next two stitches. So repeat that once more for round seven, and we'll be ready for round eight. And here's what your hydrated hiker should look like after round seven. You can see we've got all those little chain spaces all stacked on top of each other, and we've joined and we're ready to begin round eight. Round eight starts a little differently. We're going to start with a chain of eight, which will count as our turning chain and chain seven. So let's go ahead and do that now. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Then we're going to skip the first seven stitches and then we'll begin our repeat for this one. So let's count those out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And check that again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yep. So I'm going to put my thumb there to mark that next one. We begin our repeat by single crocheting in the next three stitches. So we're going to go right in that next one after the seven that we've skipped. So there's one, two, and three. You can see it takes us right up to that chain space from the previous row. Then we single crochet in that chain space. Then we chain one, single crochet in that same chain space. We want to do the same thing and bring it all the way over here to the other side. There we are. Then single crochet in the next three stitches. One, two, and three. 
Then we chain seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Skip seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then we go back to the section in the brackets. Single crochet in the next three. So there's one, two, and three. And you'll know you're in the right place there if the next thing is that chain space. So we single crochet in the chain space, chain one, single crochet at the far end. Oop, <laughs> get our ends all tangled up there. Let's get those straightened out. There we go. Single crochet at the far end of that chain space, and then single crochet in the next three stitches. So there's two and three. And that should be the last stitch of round eight. So to finish that up, what we're going to do is join with a slip stitch basically in that second chain right there. Remember we had a turning chain and then a chain seven. We can just join with a slip stitch right to that seventh chain, or if you pre prefer, you can join right into that chain space. If you're having trouble working into that chain right there, Otherwise, you can just work into that chain space for your slip stitch. But now we're all ready for round nine. To begin round nine, we start with a chain one, and then we're going to single crochet right into that chain space right there. There we go. Then we chain five. One, two, three, four, five, and single crochet at the far end of that same chain space. There we go then single crochet in the next four stitches. One, two, three, and four. Now this takes us to that little chain one that we had in the previous round. So now we're going to single crochet right in that chain one space. Again, not in the chain, but in the space underneath it. There we go. Then we single crochet in the next four stitches. One, two, three, and four. And then we do that repeat one more time because we've come to that next chain space. So let's go ahead and do it together. We single crochet in the chain space, chain five, three, four, five, single crochet at the far end of that chain space, and now we're basically going to single crochet in each stitch until we come to that chain one space. So we'll work our way around here. Should be four stitches there. And we've got that chain one. So we want to single crochet in the chain one space. And then in those last few stitches to get us all the way around here. One, two, three, and four ought to do it. Yep, that brings us all the way around. So we want to find that first single crochet that we worked into that chain space. And that is what we join to, to finish up round nine. And now we are all the way done through round nine. To begin round 10, we start with a chain one and a single crochet right into that very first stitch. That begins our repeat single crochet in the stitch, then single crochet in the next chain space, chain three, one, two, three, single crochet at the far end of that same chain space. There we go. Then single crochet in the next 10 stitches, basically all the way around until you get to that next chain space again. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. And now we begin that repeat again. Single crochet in the first stitch, single crochet in the chain space, chain three, single crochet in that same chain space, and then single crochet in each remaining stitch until we get to the end here. So that would be one, two, three, 
four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Then we join with a slip stitch in that first single crochet we made. And we're all done with round 10. In round 11, we keep the pattern going. We start with a chain one and single crochet, basically in each stitch up until we get to that chain space right there. So we've come to the chain space. We single crochet in the chain space, chain one, because that's the point we've gotten to as these have been shrinking, single crochet in that same chain space, and then just continue to single crochet around until you get to that next chain space and do the same thing. So I will see you at the end of round 11. So here we are at the end of round 11. You can see how our open work pattern has moved around our water bottle and there's only one row left to our row repeat that started with row five. Row 12 is simply chain one and single crochet in each stitch around. So let's go ahead and do that, and then we'll talk about how to make the rest of your hydrated hiker. So here we are with round 12 finished. I single crocheted in each stitch and into the chain one spaces when I came up to those. So that is our rounds five through 12 repeat. On our finished hydrated hiker, I repeated that one more time. Rounds five through 12 took us through round 19. Then I simply switched colors, but continued in pattern through round 26. Again, another set of rounds five through 12 right there. So if you wanted to make it all in one color, you could certainly do that. Or switch colors more often every time you change a repeat. It's totally up to you. Once you've got all that height made, then it's time to move to our handles. So let's do that now. After round 26, we're ready to make our handle, but we don't wanna break our yarn unless we wanna change colors. Instead, we're going to start with a chain of three, which will count as our first double crochet. And we're going to start turning. So row one of the handle is actually made from the inside of our little hiker here. We are going to work a double crochet in the next five stitches. So this will be the stitch right there. We'll go to the next one and go one, two, and three, and four, and five. Now this establishes the width of our strap, including that chain three, it's six stitches wide. If you wanted a wider strap or a narrower strap, you could definitely add or subtract stitches. It's totally up to you. But that's it for row one of our handle. Row two and all the rest of the rows of the handle are all the same. We start with a chain three, that counts as our first double crochet, and turn, or turn and then do the chain three, whichever you prefer. That's our first stitch, so we go to the next stitch, and double crochet, and we just do that all the way across. We wanna maintain the same number of stitches in every row of our handle. And then we simply continue making double crochet rows of six, or however many stitches you like, on across, Make sure you work into the top of that chain three because it does count as a double crochet. But we just keep on just like we did with row two. Chain three, double crochet across, chain three, double crochet across, all the way until the handle itself measures approximately 48 inches long or again to the size you like. If it's for a larger person, you might wanna add some rows. If it's for someone smaller, you might wanna subtract some. If it's for someone who's still growing, you can definitely Take your hydrated hiker, make it a little bit longer, and tie a knot in the top so that they've got some room to grow. After you've made the full length of your handle here, we just bring it on over to the other side. I had to look close to see which one it was on the original. Here, we simply cut a long tail of yarn, and then we can use a yarn needle to sew it right to the opposite side of our hiker. You can just lay it out flat, find those stitches, and sew it right down. And that's all there is to it. And that's how to crochet your very own Lily Sugar and Cream Hydrated Hiker Water Bottle Sling. Just go ahead and take your favorite bottle, slip it right inside, and you'll be all set for your next adventure. Thanks so much for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe.